we pay will be way when we meet our judgment day. So keep it light as a feather and fly away. Happy Sunday, Black Sustainability Summit. How are you all? Uh, thank you for allowing me to be a part of the summit for 2021. This is my second year. So I want to give thanks for the opportunity to share my knowledge and wisdom with you all for the second year. I am a massage therapist of almost 17 years now. Um, I also work with family as it relates to pregnancy, birth, and preconception as well, um, as well as postpartum. I also work with uh, psilocybin mushrooms, um, an ancient tool of technology that we have here as it relates to healing of the mind, the body, and the soul. Um, mushrooms uh, are the fruiting body of mycelium. Um, for those of you who may not know, um, mycelium is pretty much the information superhighway of the planet. You know, it's the internet, the, the true internet of the earth, you know, and beyond. Um, they predate human language, religion, and law. Um, used by hunter-gatherer societies for tens of thousands of years, you know, as it relates to survival, and increasing one's sensitivity, awareness, and overall consciousness. Um, so as it pertains to Black sustainability, I feel that we need these tools to assist us in being the gods that we came here to be. You know, we are souls having a human experience here. And we have been gifted with many tools to assist us with having a grand life, with having a greater quality of life in spite of our traumas and, and fears and insecurities and just some of the things that we experience, uh, that we came to actually experience in this particular lifetime. Um, so through the plants, through the soil, through the herbs, through the flowers, through all that is nature, we absolutely have everything that we need. You know, we don't have to um, beg or, or, or pray or, you know, do all of these things once we know that we are the gods and that we came here um, equipped with everything that we need, including love and, and one another. And again, the, the elements and the sacred plants that we have here. Um, yes, yeah, so again, the mycelium, the fruiting body um, of the, the mushrooms being the fruiting body of the mycelium. And the mycelium um, controls things like the trees, you know, I come from, well, I'm in Jamaica now, but I'm from Michigan. And there, for instance, the trees change colors in the fall. It's fall now, so the um, colors, and they will then. And fall to the ground and there's this process of transformation through the mycelium that communicates this to the trees and the spring also communicates that it's time to give new life and rebirth and then that's when the buds and the trees the, the leaves everything begins to blossom again just as we do the same cycles that the earth goes through we do as well um yeah, so having this ancient tool available to, to us to assist us and again, just overall increase of consciousness and awareness and being more sensitive and more connected to life and all that we have um, here to assist us in these experiences. Um, and again, overall, just connectivity. And we're really here just gathering information and having experiences and just crossing paths with one another to um, 
again, just grow and evolve and, and, and be rooted to this experience. Um, so as it relates to, uh, I wanna talk a little bit about family medicine and how right now on the planet is the time to get more in tune with who we are, really being, at, to, really being able to identify with who we are is so very important. And all that we do and how we're showing up in the world and also how we're not showing up in the world and the reasons as to why we aren't um, showing up as our God selves, um, operating from our higher self and our higher nature as it relates to our response to um, life, you know, and, and how life is also responding to us. Um, so with that right now, we're going through this time of spiritual war. You know, we have been for some time, especially as it relates to the medical system. You know, they are uh, one of the largest entities of the government, right along with the media and our schools and um, the police and, and just all those things that we don't realize are, are connected. So I just want to say that it's time again for us to get in tune with who we are and our gifts that we have to offer, um, but most importantly, our bodies and our health and that of our families um, and our communities as well, just as far as kind of your reach goes uh, with who you are and the work that you do, but especially for us women, men too, but especially for us being women, the ones who give forth life, it's very important for us to be in tune with ourselves and the medicine around us and just what's best for our families. We carry the blueprint um, of the co-creator and of this planet. That way we can carry life and sustain it and be able to be in tune with ourselves and that life um, in a way that no one really can tell us what's best for us. They can suggest, you know, and, and we do take advice and wisdom from um, the medical system. You know, but really getting in tune with ourselves and our own bodies and our own cells and our muscles and our tissues and everything um, in a way where we can begin to take control and have better outcomes as it relates to our health and what we're allowing others to speak over us, um, our bodies and into our children. Uh, we really don't realize the impact that these things are having on us um, collectively. Um, also, as it relates to family planning and bringing forth life, you know, when we uh, pick out cars, we know exactly what we want for the car, the color, the kits, the, um, the accessories and all those things, you know, we get married and we want to, you know, we know what colors we want, we know what kind of cake, we do tasting for cakes and venues and all of these things, but as it relates to birth, uh, we just kind of allow things to happen, you know, so learning to be more uh, intentional and purposeful with bringing forth life and what our bodies need and what our souls need, as well as what our partners need throughout these experiences without always depending on others to tell us how our bodies work and also, you know, just, just what's best for us, you know, when they have not been given um, the gift of having a womb, you know, and going through the processes, you know, it's, it's so weird how we go to um, others to tell us how to give birth and they've never given birth before, you know, they've never carried a baby and they don't even have the equipment, you know, or they don't also they don't carry the blueprint in order to sustain that life, you know, so learning to be more um, again, in control of our medicine as it relates to our families and what's best and not doubting um, how we feel, um, our intuition um, is very important. So learning to cultivate a life that supports um, healing and sensitivity and just awareness and allowing things like the psilocybin mushroom uh, specifically in addition to other self-care practices to um, help to activate us and get us to know ourselves on a level that we've never uh, gotten to know ourselves before, you know, outside of religion, outside of the programming of schools and our parents and 
tradition and all these things. So learning to create a new reality, which many of us are doing. Um, and I commend so many of you for um, the work that we are doing with the soil, uh, with our families, with our communities and all over the world. Um, but definitely learning to take it to another level. Um, our lives depend on it, our, leg our living legacy depends on it, um, as well as our future generations, again, including uh, the ancestors who have not even been born yet. You know, so this work is very vital for so many of us um, who take this thing very seriously. Um, the plant medicine also as it relates to rituals, um, that many of us um, don't do. And there's just like, you know, sometimes not a lot of awareness around it, or there's fears that we have been pre-programmed with. You know, there is a such thing as epigenetic impressions. And that's where we as pregnant women um, that are, well, I'm not pregnant, but those of us who carry children during that time, we take in so much, you know, through our friends, through the environment, through um, our families, through our spouses. You know, so it's very important for us to learn to bring in rituals with our partners that we plan to create lives with and to um, create just to create period, you know, projects, uh, building, um, nation building, all of these things, it's important for us to know um, and have a sense of connection with the individuals that we're dealing with beyond the surface level, beyond the ego, beyond what we want, you know? Um, so using sacred plant medicines along with self-care, along with creating personalized rituals for your family in order to have better connection, uh, better results, and again, just overall better consciousness and awareness and all that we are and all that we do. Um, so we're, we're connecting with individuals and we're giving forth life, um, going through life and oftentimes it's without the rituals and without some of the medicine and without the tools and, and the care that we need in order for us to have the best impact that we're looking to have. Um, with these things. Um, and there's also the transition of life, which is synonymous, is right there with birth, you know, is, is what we more commonly call death, you know, again, or the transition of life. So creating more rituals with our loved ones, being in tune with their spirit, being in tune with our blood, which is very important. There is power in the blood, you know, our blood our Holy Spirit that we've been gifted with. So learning to trust ourselves more. And again, um, putting ourselves in a position to deprogram all that we've been programmed with every day. It is in the air that we breathe. So it's very important for us to, to take on these rituals um, of sacred plant medicine uh, with our families, uh, alone, by ourselves, with our partners, with our business partners, um, so we can create um, just, just better, a better experience here, you know, overall, sustaining a better life, um, allowing these tools to complement the lives that many of us already have. Um, old relationships and things that no longer serve us, we don't realize that a lot of these things we continue to carry on. Uh, we kind of shove it in our subconscious mind and we don't often realize um, that we're creating habits and recreating um, circumstances that don't serve us based on the fact that we haven't taken the time to sit with the things that we've gone through, you know, um, the good, the bad and the ugly and, not judging those things and just allowing them to be. But the way we've been conditioned in society, we tend to carry a heavy load. We tend to, um, and in that creating masks that we continue to wear and not being in tune with our authentic selves and who that really is and what that self really wants and what that self really needs. You know, so allowing this sacred plant medicine to assist us and guide us and cleanse us and purify us as well as um, 
allowing new things to come in, the information that we need, the downloads, the uploads that we need to receive in order to have better experiences. Clearing out all of the, the debris and the emotion and, and often things that we don't realize we're carrying. Post-traumatic stress, you know, post-traumatic relationship uh, disorders, post-traumatic slavery disorders, you know, the, the information rides on the bloodline. So using these tools um, that just grow organically from the earth, you know, we do have ways of cultivating them as well, but using these tools as a way to tap into our DNA, to activate our codes, to, um, to activate our ancestral codes and to awaken our pineal gland, um, also the Akashic records where all the experiences are stored, you know, again, we're just here kind of remembering who we are and taking, partaking in, in things that assist us in remembering who we are, you know, just like, you know, certain things are for your heart or certain herbs and, and fruits and things are for your lungs or for your liver or your kidney. We have psilocybin mushrooms and other plant medicines to assist us in our spiritual awareness, you know, as well as our body. So as it relates to many things, healing, um, there's so much potential for this work as it relates to mental health, um, which a, a lot of that is just stockpiled emotions and, and trauma and resentment, and grief, anger, and rage, and, and hostility, and a lot of the things that we experience based on based on our experiences. You know, sometimes even from the time we are conceived in our mother's womb, based on their level of consciousness. You know, many of us are even here to break generational curses off of our family. So we have to realize that those of us who um, are on these paths um, to clear our bloodlines, that we're going to uh, go through some things, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. So learning to stand in our power as God's and not allowing so many things to affect us physically, spiritually, and emotionally the way we do. So once we find who we are and get in tune with that higher self, we can begin to create um, a better world around us and have that impact on the individuals around us, whether they're aware or not, or whether they um, share with you about that or not. But yeah, just... Um, partaking in the sacred plant medicines as well as just taking care of ourselves. So much of what we're experiencing is just us simply not taking care of ourselves. And again, that's not an easy thing to do when you don't know who you are. You don't know where you're going. You don't know where you come from. You don't know your superpowers, you know? And again, for those of us that do, and there's so many levels to these things that allows us to get to know ourselves even better and on deeper levels. Um, because again, we're trying to relate with individuals, but you can only meet others as deeply as you've met yourself, you know? Um, so again, using these sacred plant medicines to assist us in the various cycles of life, you know, again, life, death, rebirth, our joys, happiness, fears, insecurities, all these things, you know? Um, yeah, let's see. Again, uh, so yes, yeah, using this as a tool of self-empowerment, you know, seeing how we are blocking our own blessing, um, consciously, subconsciously, you know, areas of self-sabotage, and uh, more importantly, the ego. You know, we're being programmed to have such an ego and allowing that ego to disrupt our missions and causing many of us to abort our missions and just not saying our mission clearly. Again, where, where are you going if you don't know who you are? You know, and if you aren't loving yourself and taking care of yourself and surrounding yourselves with environments and individuals that support your mission, you know, so that's very important as, as it relates to sustainability and, and just sustaining ourselves as humans. You know, it really starts within um, and within our own homes and, and everything that we touch. Um, 
Yes, you really can't build community without it. You can, but what's the quality of the community that we're building? We're fully not in tune with ourselves and don't know why we're doing what we're doing, you know, and, and doing what we're doing and oftentimes not with the best energy and not with pure intentions um, as a part of that, that formula. So yes, using sacred plant medicines and self-care and ritual as a means to sustain ourselves as well as our projects and the things that, you know, we involve ourselves in. Um, relationships, again, uh, I, I recommend using these rituals and sacred plant medicines. Um, so there's other sacred plant medicines. One of my first sacred plant medicines um, is and was aromatherapy. So something as simple as, um, which was just really not simple, you know, so um, the essence of, of the plants and the flowers and the aromas to heal and to activate certain parts of our bodies and uplift our spirits, as well as the other antifungal, antibacterial uh, properties and things that they offer. Um, make sure my volume is up here also. Yes. And also as a tool just to explore our content. Again, we're taught by individuals. Who don't know anything. Today we don't put ourselves in position. to learn more about ourselves and, and, and the, and the fungus kingdom. Um, um, that all the um, marriage, I recommend individuals to partake in these rituals and sacred plants so that you can see the individuals often for the first time. Um, again, we're operating on this third dimension that doesn't allow us to sometimes really see the world around us and connect with it and really appreciate it and embody, embody it. One of, the, um, one of the benefits of the sacred planet, plant medicine for me too is really being able to embody and feel outside of my mind and outside of um, different ways we've been programmed to feel and experience things. Um, so like with me, one of my best forms of communication is nonverbal communication. That's how the earth functions and operates. Um, actually, like on Sundays are my fasting from talking days. You know, we're just taught, we're taught and programmed to talk, talk, talk and go, go, go. And we're barely breathing. And, you know, so sometimes we need to listen to our spirit. That was something that my spirit guided me to do was take one day from talking just to be you know there's a divine art of being that allows us to fully tap into our selves again our god selves and really being able to process and sit back and absorb and receive and appreciate you know sometimes we do need to be quiet um, to learn just how to appreciate and fully listen and be able to really retain you know, much of what we're saying, because oftentimes we're talking to ourselves, just like I am now. <laughs> I'm talking to you all, but I'm really talking to myself, you know, but yes, learning ways to have healthier relationships with ourselves and with our children, with our parents. There's a lot of healing that needs to be done, especially in our communities of color. You know, um, we all know the things that we experience using these tools as, again, a rites of passage at a young age for our children, you know, but again, oh, 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 oh there are drugs, you know, do your research, you know, oh, oh, well, the law, well, we're going to take control of your own life, you know, uh, once we're doing the things that we know we should be doing and we have the earth's protection um, and we've given ourselves permission, you know, we don't worry about those things. We don't live in fear. Again, we are the God, so we learn to operate differently once we begin to activate ourselves accordingly, you know. Um, so again, using these plant medicines to assist our children in reaching their fullest potential, you know, clearing out the things that don't serve them, you know, 
sometimes coming from single parent homes, homes with domestic violence, you know, death, drug use, um, all of these things are, are more reasons why we need the plant medicine to cleanse off, you know, to be able to, to cry, to be able to heal, you know, crying is one of the greatest forms of purification that we have as humans, right? There was laughing, you know, and many of us aren't laughing, you know, many of us aren't crying, you know, you think about um, individuals and not just men, you know, sometimes in our communities with the men, it's like, you know, punch them in his chest, you know, you, you bet not cry, you know, so where does that cry go? You know, when we have unrealistic and unmet expectations and relationships and just of our families and, and jobs, where do those emotions go? And do we have time to sit with them and process them and really process how we feel? Um, I don't think that many of us take the time for one to truly just sit with ourselves, you know, um, and with that really feeling and finding out how we feel you know individuals ask us well how are you doing you know are you okay oh I'm great I'm fine everything's okay I'm wonderful I'm amazing you know but that's not really how they feel subconsciously there's some other energies involved that we may not even be aware of so using the the medicine as a tool of exploration you know to really get inside of ourselves and look around and see how we're feeling see what that cancer looks like for some of our family, you know, see where that anger and resentment is really, really, truly coming from. Dealing with any sexual trauma, you know, for our men, for our women and our community, sexual, tr sexual trauma and abuse has run rampant. And as many of, uh, as women perpetrators as well as the men, you know, and some of these individuals are now elders in the church, and elders in our community that have been predators um, as well as victims themselves and continue to victimize others, you know, and, and sometimes uh, big mama hit it, you know, uh, she knew, you know, grandpa knew, you know, and some of them have victimized their own families and their own children. So we have to have sacred spaces and safe containers for healing, you know, to get to the root of these issues and problems. Um, and, and with the balance of that, you know, I want to make sure that I'm pointing out our spiritual gifts, you know, and the divine nature that we have here and lean more into that. Again, leaning more into the good times, um, not repeating those old stories anymore. But again, that takes healing work to be able to identify that once we're repeating these stories and continuing to tell these stories over and over again, how they are impacting our lives how they're impacting our finances, our relationships, and just our mental health overall. So again, using these tools as a way of clearing, cleaning out house, you know, and with that, um, sometimes with the sacred ceremony, with the medicine and everything isn't done, you know, these experiences didn't happen in one day. So to have um, the expectation that in one ceremony, uh, with the psilocybin that is gonna take everything away is, is again, unrealistic. So learning that with ritual, it takes time, it takes consistency, it takes proper preparation, um, and it takes proper integration as well. You know, just like with having a baby, we want to be as best prepared as we can and still allowing nature to take its course and leaving room for the to the, to the divine, to work its magic and for the unknown, again, we don't know everything. And we're also, we're always trying to process things and use our mind and, and Google and YouTube to understand and everything is not meant to be understood. You know, so again, leaving room for the unknown, you know, and again, taking care of ourselves in all aspects of these things, uh, being careful with sacred plant medicine, uh, finding, um, righteous cultivators and um, individuals to assist you in, in learning and understanding as, as much as you can and need to um, what this medicine is and its benefits and how it can assist you. And knowing that we come across these things as we need to, you know, we're constantly praying, praying, praying. We've been taught to pray without fail, but we're not being taught to receive. You know, we're looking for 
someone outside of ourselves to save us when we've been sent. And also the herbs have been sent, the plant medicine has been sent, you know, the children have been sent, like all these experiences have been sent to answer our prayers. So making sure that we're cleaning house, you know, because many of us are praying and oh yes, I just wanted to share about again the psilocybin mushrooms and um, just some of the benefits as it relates to empowering ourselves, activating ourselves, and just again, being more in tune with our mission and our purpose, um, being able to identify the people that are for us and the people who are against us and learning to govern ourselves accordingly. You know, we are sovereign beings in spite of what things may appear uh, the way they appear to be right now. So again, just tap more into the God self, the God energy, taking care of ourselves. Um, and again, this medicine uh, works best when we're already in the process of uh, cultivating a great life and uh, getting rid of the things that don't serve us and that have been weighing us down uh, for so long, generationally. So it's just time, you all, for us to, again, tap into the God energy, God is energy, um, getting in tune with our higher selves, um, building communication with our higher, uh, our higher self, because it always has our best interest in mind. You know, uh, I often speak about one of my plant medicine experiences where I saw a woman in a cast. And I don't think it was me. It, it, it didn't appear to be me. It's just one of those things when you are in an altered state of consciousness, it can get kind of interesting, I'll say, because we're so used to processing things from this end. Anyway, so there was a woman in the casket, and at that moment, I was like, am I dying? You know, it, it does take you into the realm of death. Um, it, it's perceived to be that way, you know. Actually, when you're born and when you die and have these near-death experiences, dimethyltryptamine is produced in the pineal gland. Same thing that happens we're under when we're... Uh, inside of many of these plant ceremonies is that these chemicals are being produced in the brain. Um, so it takes you into your life's experiences. You see your life flash before your eyes. Um, and that's often what allows people to be transformed and renewed. You know, we aren't transforming oftentimes through love and, and life and, and sunlight and, and all these wonderful provisions that we have here. It typically happens when we experience trauma you know, for whatever reason. Again, just conditioning and the programs that we're currently under. So yes, allowing these sacred plant medicines to work with us to heal our minds, to heal our bodies, to heal our relationships and to heal the land. Um, tapping more into our spiritual gifts, enhancing our spiritual gifts, um, helping you to get in touch with the spiritual gifts that you didn't know you had. Um, Again, those ancestral gifts, many of us are doing the work of our foremothers and our forefathers. You know, many of us now are the grandmothers we never had um, and greater versions of them, not taking anything away from who they are and the work that they do and that they've done, but becoming grander versions, better representations of them and all while allowing ourselves the experiences that we need to have for the self as well. Um, I just feel there's a balance with you know, paying homage and honoring our ancestors, which we are, you know, um, but also having our experiences and really kind of not owing anybody anything and just helping us to, again, be more authentic and coming from a place of truth and removing anything that is not of that. Um, any questions you may have, you can reach me um, at serenityissweet at yahoo.com. Um, also, sweet serenity company, just the CEO, dot weebly .com. Um, I offer consultant, consulting to individuals and families as it relates to just overall spiritual um, wisdom and consulting, but also conception work for those of you who are looking to uh, create families and bring forth life, um, healing, birth, breastfeeding, postpartum support, 
Um, and again, as far as the plant medicine goes, how to prepare, um, how to um, go into ceremony and also the integration period, which is uh, just as important as all of the rest, um, but just how to integrate back into this reality of a greater quality of life and living. So thank you all for your time and um, be well. Thank you.